What's up guys, it's Drack, and after a whole year of dry spell, no top five Fridays, it's time. We're back at it like a bad habit to tell you what the top five foam blasters were of 2021. A quick thing of ground rules, there have been a ton of amazing 3D printed designs and maybe we'll visit those later, but this one's just for the injection molded blasters, which kind of draws a line of like these are production products as opposed to these are you know, more homegrown tinkerings, which tend to be far more feature rich anyway. But before we can get into number five, we get a special guest to help us out with the honorable mentions. All right, so I brought my buddy Bobo over. He's gonna help us with our honorable mentions. So these are our two choices. We went with the uh, the Striker and... The Tomahawk 60. All right, you explain why you picked yours. All right, so the Tomahawk 60 is pretty cool if you're into the run and gun sort of thing. It's a 60 round spinning drum that you just... Also comes off, which is You cool. can quickly change. Uh, uh, but yeah, the drum holds two layers of darts, so you can just kind of put them in as you go around. You slap it back into this thing, and then you, you know. Constantly topping it up. Fly a little pew, 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 which is great for certain HBZ players. And the best part is, it's only $30. Yeah, for 30 bucks, 30 you bucks. get 60 darts of onboard capacity, as Bobo described it. I like to call these kind of things like scavenger. Blasters, it's easy to pick your darts up off of the campus that you play on. That swaps in and out like that. Quick reloads in the form of new drums if you wanted to, and it's a semi-auto flywheel blaster using, you know, dart zone darts, which are pretty good. Speaking of, I would also uh, like to say, yeah. it even has a nerf strike. Yeah, nerf strike it's got a point. it's got a confusing which stock is, attachment point. You know, if you're big like I am, you can get the da -da -da, hip He's fire. So, He's so big. Good for a lot of people. Yeah, so exactly. That's why I picked it. Speaking of darts, uh, this is sort of the other honorable mention. The uh, the Dart Zone Max darts are the target version of the Dart Zone Pro darts. We mentioned these in last year's, but you know, Target has options for pro category blasters now and just readily available darts at the same price point. It's $15, you get 150 in the package. The red and gray, which is an awesome color combo. I love these darts. I think that they're really comparable to the pro darts, but I'm forgetting, what were they called? Are they called Ruby Darts, I think? Thanks. So Dart Zone ran like a naming Something contest like that, for yeah. them. And then the other honorable mention is the Striker. The Striker is an honorable mention and not a like formally listed blaster because uh, it's easy to detract from the Striker and say it's just a Nexus. Uh, right. But it's still nice. But the Nexus is great. <laughs> so like uh, it this. Doesn't it doesn't look red. Exactly. Parts. Yeah, it's got a better scope, a better stock. I mean, there's, it's definitely, I think of it as kind of a refined Nexus Pro. And in that way, uh, if I had to choose, um, as much as I like the Nexus, and I like that it's neon orange for some situations, I actually prefer the shell of the Striker. I like that it's rail is completely unibody as opposed to staggered. I really don't like the staggering of the Yeah, Nexus. I mean, I think, my biggest problems with it. I think the Striker is really handsome. And even though it's kind of a reshell, reskin, retooling, I think that it deserved to be on the list. So looks great. Lots of good mod parts out there for us as well. Oh yeah, there are some good mod parts out there for I it. I wonder where you can get them, <laughs> Drag. <laughs> Anyway, if you, uh, if you enjoyed Bobo in the top five, come back next Friday where Bobo will be helping us with the top five worst blasters. I'm taking these home. There you go. See you later, Bobo. Bye. All right, coming in at number five is a Nerf blaster. I know, I know, it's crazy. But this is a feature-rich Nerf blaster that does something that we've kind of talked about a lot throughout the year, but for those of you just watching the recap, not all blasters have to be performance powerhouses. It's nice when they function properly, and sometimes those two get confused, which in a world where the number one blaster brand doesn't always have that overlap, is a confusing point to be sure. However, once you establish a baseline of function, it's okay for blasters to just be fun and cool. And this is a T-Rex themed Nerf blaster. That's awesome. It's also feature rich, which helps. It's got onboard dart storage. The built-in scope I wish was on a tactical rail, which is why it's pretty low on the list. And the overall deco could use a facelift. In fact, this is my second or third one. It's hard to say because I keep meaning to take one apart and paint it like some sort of cyber dino zoid thing. I just haven't gotten around to it. But uh, for lack of actual detailing, they've done a lot of really good molding and uh, overlapping and their, their coloring and their plastic. I mean, this thing has a lot of good stuff going on for it. And in a world where the Strife has been repriced to about 30 United States dollars, getting all of the goodness of a Strife 
in a $35 package is $5 for dino flavor. $5, fifth place. Number five blaster is the Rex Rampage. I think it's pretty sweet. For our number four blaster, I had to go to Walmart and drop 20 bucks. Why? Because I keep selling these faster than I can get new ones. So this is the Fortnite 6SH. It's their suppressed revolver of sorts. And realistically, it's just all the good things about a hammer shot plus an extra shot in a very comfortable shell without the grip tape. I mean, the hammer shot is probably the best Nerf pistol of all time. And this is a strict upgrade on that platform without the zombie strike flavor. So as long as you're willing to make a few minor additions <coughs> and perhaps snub it off with something pretty spicy. I think that this guy is excellent. If you don't want, you know, a gap filler for an ultra clean look, you could legitimately just take a hacksaw to the nubbin that comes off. The only thing I recommend not doing is definitely don't go attaching the muzzle device to it because it's so much better without it. That said, uh, overall at 20 bucks for a six shot revolver that spins nicely, uh, you can omit the Fortnite flavor entirely. And you just have a really clean silhouette for paint jobs or modifications of your choosing. I think it's tough to beat. All right, so our number three blaster is injection molded, but it's not from one of the usual suspects. This behemoth of a sniper rifle is the Worker Swift. Now, Worker's made a lot of really bad injection molded shells over the past, you know, two, three years. They've had a couple of good ones. Admittedly, some of their early flywheel shells were quite robust. And in a world where we couldn't find cheap flywheel shells, it was pretty nice. Plus, they were compatible with all their aftermarket parts. This is effectively Worker's super expanded long shot nonsense bonanza. The Worker Swift is an incredibly sharp sci-fi shell. It looks like something that would come out of oblivion. It's got a variety of different upgrade kits available for it. Some as bundles, some as upgrade packages. But the most important thing is that almost all of the internals stock are made of metal. It's held together with pins. It's easy to change some stuff. It's got a variable stock. I need to do a full review on this blaster, but like it's got a lot of stuff to like going on. It is an exclusively Talon compatible blaster. Now it is expensive, which is part of why it's lower on the list. This configuration is gonna cost you well over $200 between the optic, the metal dart gate, the extended barrel, et cetera. And it's, uh, it's doing a lot of stuff that I like. It ships with some pretty crummy O-rings, so you have to kind of finagle it into performance mode, but it seems like a lot of that was by design. In terms of its overall like firing, I mean, we're talking 300 FPS shots by the time you've put enough of those upgrades in. And 300 FPS out of an injection molded shell is certainly nothing to joke about. I think that it's available from a variety of different uh, hobby based retailers so that you can toss a coin to your Witcher if you uh, are so inclined over at a foam blast shop and out of darts. I think that it's in stock for slightly less, although I don't know what their availability of bundles and kits may or may not be. Overall, an incredibly simple, but an incredibly ergonomic and powerful shell that's easy to assemble, easy to upgrade, and robust enough inside to handle pretty much any spring that'll fit. Overall, I couldn't have been more surprised and pleasantly so by the Worker Swift, and that's why it's our number three blaster. Number two is the Adventure Force Conquest Pro. And there's like not a lot to say about this blaster other than it's excellent. It's the kind of thing that we would have lost our minds over in a world without the Nexus or the Aeon Pro coming in at 25 and $50 and setting a real bar for performance-based fun within the hobby. The almost suffering from its own success that the Conquest Pro has is it's got this, uh, this interesting price point at around $40 and occasionally goes on sale where it's a full compact blaster that's not quite as you know ergonomically familiar as the Nexus Pro, but costs significantly less. So I think that it's a terrific blaster. I think this is the kind of thing that if it had existed, you know, before the Nexus Pro would have been absolutely, you know, revolutionary, game breaking, etc. But it didn't really launch to a ton of fanfare because it launched so quickly after like it was Nexus, then Aeon, then Conquest, but here's the Striker, et cetera, and so forth. And I feel like it got glazed over, but it's got this incredible loading mechanism in the back where it's compatible with not only its own magazines, but also Talons. And it's an incredibly powerful pump action Springer, half-length dedicated, you know, a 
mag eject system, which works better with its built-in mags than the uh, the talons uh, that it just happens to be compatible with. It's it's elegant in its simplicity, and for a CQB blaster with a performance focus, I think that it's actually tough to beat in its category. At only 40 United States dollars, it's a deal to boot. So. I was very impressed with it. I think that it's got a lot going for it. And if you haven't actually played with one, I highly recommend picking one up and taking it apart. I mean, it's it's really it's really pretty cool how it uh, it uses this flipping mechanism on the inside to grab the dart, peel it off, and push it forward into a breech system. And then the fact that it delivers you know pro level performance on top of that is exactly why it deserves to be our number two blaster. And as you might have guessed, our number one blaster is a real pro in category. The first flywheel pro blaster is, of course, the DZP Mark III. And carrying the full Dart Zone Pro, not Aeon Pro, not Max Pro, like, but the actual pro uh, lineage with a mark number of its own, this thing definitely didn't disappoint. It is a powerhouse flywheel blaster achieving FPSs and performance and features that previously were completely unknown to the, you know, off the shelf market and existed only in like hobbyist commission based world and brought it uh, to the mass market. Now mine's painted up Bumblebee style because I thought that I would get cute with it, but it is a lipo compatible, you know, half length, full length, multi, select fire, full auto, semi auto, you know, tube stock compatible, rubberized grips, the whole kit and caboodle ready to go. It is a highly modular performance based flywheel system with quite the cage, what is roughly the equivalent of aftermarket flywheels out of the box. And it's doing all of that at a retail price of 130, which while it's definitely expensive for an entry level Nerf blaster, is actually remarkably affordable for a performance flywheel blaster. So uh, I was incredibly impressed with it to the tune of making a bunch of parts for it. And I've actually modified all of them to the extent that I don't have a stock one to show you on camera right now. So you're gonna have to bear with me in my Bumblebee paint job, but uh, the Mark III is easily the most innovative and you know exciting thing that's been released over the course of the year, and that's why it had to be our number one spot. When you consider that it's a Target.com exclusive as of right now, and Target is constantly running a get $25 off of a toy purchase of $100 and more, while it might retail for $130, oftentimes it feels like it costs more like $105. So if you've been on the fence, I highly recommend picking one up the next time they do a sale like that. Anyway, that's our top five heavy hitters. It was an interesting year, I guess, for performance-based blasters. There were a lot of pro entries in 2021. And because of kind of how everything is blurring time-wise together for a litany of different reasons, it feels like it wasn't that long ago that we started getting things like, you know, the Mark II and the Nexus and the Aeon and what have you. But with a Foam Pro Tour in full effect with qualifiers to go to and ways to use more competitive, fun foam flinging products, I think that uh, this trend is going to continue. And I'm really hoping that 2022 is the year that we see other companies enter the space. Right now, it's one company dominating pretty much everybody's top five list because they're the only company making, you know, innovative products that are driven with with consumer interest. Now, it was a fun change of pace because this year we saw Hasbro return to the top list. While they definitely produced a lot of garbage, it's nice to see them producing some things that are, you know, reliable and perform well in terms of like their overall function at a price point that's relatively fair. I think that we see that in the Fortnite pistol. It's nice to see some of these video game tie-ins doing cool stuff. And more importantly, like it's nice to see them having fun with it in the form of the dinosaur blasters being an internal property that's just frankly like pretty cool. So that's uh, I guess kind of the state of the top five best. I'm really excited of course to see what the next year brings us. Again, my number one I guess hope for the next year is I'd like to see pro blasters from other categories and other segments and other companies. I guess the thing that I expect is I expect more overpriced video game tie-ins that perform under elite standard. But you know, we'll talk more about uh, realistic expectations in the top five worst blasters of 2021, which will be coming up same drag time, same drag place, top five Fridays next week. Much love, blast on, drag out. Uh -huh.